ne pourrait pas parler de sustainable development without talking about education and the best way to apprehend this is the knowledge disseminated based on a concept of a new life in society. Remember the history of sustainable development. In 2002, the United Nations gave the UNESCO the mission, the assignment to think about educational models and how to integrate sustainable development in our thinking models and the way we design school teaching. This was called the Decade for Sustainable Development, starting in 2004, and the decade concluded uh, itself in 2014. Now, over the decade, several dimensions, strong dimensions of education to sustainable development have been highlighted. During the Nagoya Summit in November 2014, the uh, participants thought about the future educational models for our societies and whether this model could change our behavior, the way we teach, the way we uh, disseminate knowledge and possibly discriminate between knowledge on the one hand and skills or competences on the other hand, because it's not always easy to go from the one to the other when we talk about employment or employability. Now, the 10-year-long reflection highlighted several elements. Who teaches education for sustainable development? Who thinks the concepts and who makes them operational? And it appeared very quickly that formal teaching what is taught in schools, high schools and university played an essential role. But informal teaching, information given by NGOs or associations also plays an important role. How many times has education for sustainable development been left to those associations? And it is absolutely necessary to formalize this type of teaching. So UNESCO thought about numerous projects and the discussion the discussion started on values, because teaching is not just about content, knowledge, but also the values that will be uh, added to educational models. How do we think in terms of cooperation, collaboration, gifts, self-respect, and this should be forwarded in the form of competences and remember the three spheres, economy, social, environment, and researchers have been thinking on educational models integrating those aspects. Should education still be free of charge? Should we pay for education? What relationship do we have with nature, with the environment? What social dimension do we refer to when we talk about education? Should ed education be envisaged as education for all, which is what UNESCO is aiming for for the future? Or should uh, education for the sustainable development be something that we learn throughout life. But what matters is that we have a capital that we accumulate and that we leverage on and transmit to future generations. Now, not all models are global. Many models are local, and each society can develop its own uh, educational model. But the fact that there is a huge diversity of models should make us think about the way we teach, and we should compare those models. People talk about teaching techniques, but I think we should think in terms of what kind of uh, teaching methods do we use. Should they be active, proactive? Should we uh, interact with the teachers? Uh, who teaches? Who disseminates the knowledge? And sustainable development is something that can be envisaged under a large number of different dimensions. Every country has uh, invested in education for environment, sustainable environment. France in 2004 started uh, the reflection with a decree voted in uh, 2004. What kind of disciplines must be involved in the education for sustainable development? Initially, it was done in uh, geography classes and then finally sciences uh, of the uh, sci sciences of the planet and progressively all kinds of disciplines but we have to go even further we should work in interdisciplinary terms disciplines should uh, be connected with each other we should share knowledge there should be reflexivity between the disciplines and uh, knowledge will gravitate all around the exchange of information and if if we could go even further towards trans uh, transdisciplinary approach, how one discipline can help us understand our history in another discipline, transversality, horizontal, cross-border 
use of disciplines uh, is uh, very interesting. Reverse classes are a very good example. How can we break the educational cycle and the way we think of education? Sustainable development, every day actions are a cross-border element. So the discussion with the, those people who are learning becomes a debate which is synonym, synonymous to learning, but everybody can contribute to the process. A child, a student, a secondary school pupil could provide some knowledge and contribute to the debate and even to the formation of a new model or a type of teaching that uses those ideas. So is there a model for education to sustainable development? Some researchers have tried to use the three spheres and transfer them into the uh, teaching curriculum for schools. Human development, for instance, is very important. It's all very well to have knowledge and uh, skills, but we have to uh, enrich the capital. And also, we think that we have to learn about the resources that we are using, what kind of relationship we want to have with nature. We don't want nature to become a sort of sanctuary. We simply want to learn the relationship between culture and nature. Sustainable development and education for sustainable development, therefore, becomes a very interesting element, something that is now being used by many different teachers that could be a method helping us work with uh, pupils and not just uh, young pupils, also adults, and Dragogy is teaching to adults, so that they learn about sustainable development. So a model has been set up, REDOX stands for representation, teaching uh, approach, uh, teaching tools and competence, based on the fact that we have different representations of sustainable development. People talk about the environment, people talk more about inequalities, others use the economic model, and our representations will make us share something. There will be a consensus emerging. I'm not talking about a compromise, a consensus, collaboration, so that we can imagine a model jointly. And once we have understood the various representations, we could start thinking of a teaching method. It could be a critical teaching method, pedagogy. We criticize the knowledge. We try and uh, place the knowledge in the context, but also we could develop the investigative capacity, teach our pupils how to investigate themselves and understand, uh, learn the same way that they would solve, the, solve an enigma or a mystery. The tools uh, are numerous, uh, and uh, fairy tales, for instance, could be used in uh, kindergartens, or photographic training could also be used. Uh, we need to un make students understand how complex the information is, so they have to go and get the information, understand the sources. This could be a very good tool. So all of these teaching tools bring us back towards competences and skills. What kind of skills do we want to release? Knowledge is important, but value values are important, know-how is important. How can you be a good citizen if you don't know how to act in your life in society? The will to act is also another skill. So there are many different elements showing that this type of reflection could help us see a change in our behavior, and that's the whole point for education to sustainable development.